Hello, everyone, and welcome to the latest episode of the Metabolism and Menopause podcast. My name is Stephanie, and I am your host and CEO of Vitality OET. We are a women's nutrition, health, and fitness company that focuses predominantly on women's hormones, particularly as they start going through perimenopause and onwards. We know that you start experiencing so many changes in this time of your life, whether it be hot flashes, night sweats, irritability, brain fog, or waking around the middle that seems to have come out of absolutely nowhere, despite you not changing anything. So you go back to those tried and true methods of cutting calories, cutting carbs, doing a bunch of cardio, yet nothing seems to be working. In fact, it feels like you're putting in all this effort and you're actually moving backwards. But we know now that your body is inherently different than it was prior to you having these hormonal changes. So our mission here at Vitality is to really help you understand how your body changes in this time of your life so you can reach those health and fitness goals, live a life full of vitality, and really understand how to take care of this new body of yours. So today I want to talk about the seasons of menopause fat loss, the approach that we use, how you cycle through it so that you're not in a deficit forever because you can't diet forever. That's why your diets aren't working anymore. And really just explain everything for you that summarizes a lot of the stuff that we talk about when we talk about reverse dieting, when we talk about maintenance, when we talk about diet breaks, like really tie it in all together so you understand how do you go about this? Because it can be really overwhelming, right? So First of all, I just want to set the stage for you. You know, you've you've struggled with your weight in the past, or maybe it didn't happen until you got the joy of hitting perimenopause, right? And it just feels like you haven't really changed anything, right? You haven't changed your diet, you haven't really changed your exercise, and all of a sudden you see weight gain just come on really quickly, or it just seems to be like slowly coming on despite you not really changing anything in your life. And it seems to settle around your belly, that wonderful menopause belly that we all talk about, right? So again, you're going back to all the, the things that you used to do and you start doing more exercise and you start cutting your calories more and maybe you're cutting even more carbs out and you're being more and more restrictive, but it just feels like this time things are so, so different, right? The weight doesn't come off. And on top of it, you're struggling with your sleep, your stress, your energy, digestion. You have that afternoon crash, right? You're having more cravings, the night sweats, your mood is all over the place. You can't focus, you have brain fog, and yet you keep pushing and the weight just seems to not budge or it just keeps piling on. So you become frant- frantic, right? You become desperate. You you try the keto, you do more extreme things and more extreme things and cutting 1200 calories and now you're fasting as well and you join even more exercise programs and you try some fat burner pills and still nothing, right? And not only did those things not work or they aren't working, but they're also not sustainable, right? What do you do when you do lose the weight? How are you gonna keep that off? Because you can't keep doing what you're doing because you're miserable, you feel like crap, right? And it can leave you putting on more weight than when you actually started, right? And we see this happen to women a lot where they're like, I did this diet and then I gained the weight back and now I can't get it to budge or now I'm heavier than when I started, you know, all these things. And here is what is happening, okay? So you hit perimenopause, bam, awesome. This can happen as young as 35, which is great right? We're so, we're so happy about this. Um, we used to complain about our periods. Now we're complaining about menopause and, you know, our hormones play a big impact on all this. So we see estrogen go down. We see progesterone go down and that's going to make you more weight loss resistant. It's going to lower your thyroid function. So your body's not as good at burning calories anymore. You're going to see an increase in your insulin resistance with those hormone changes. So now our body can't control blood sugar as well. We see more fluid retention. It's hard to build and maintain muscle mass. Our bone density is going down. We start having symptoms of depression. It just feels like chaos and you just want to feel like yourself again, right? But we know estrogen and progesterone play incredibly important protective roles in our body prior to hitting perimenopause. So if you've ever been pregnant or had PMS, which let's face it, that's been most of us, right? 
you know exactly how powerful these hormones are when we have them in higher levels, lower levels, right? But think about how powerful it might be if those levels are gone, right? We see women that get tested and it's like, I cannot believe how low it is, right? So then we lose all those protective effects against stress and muscle loss and cardiovascular disease and diabetes and all these things. And your body is functioning differently now because of these hormone changes. So it is something that we have to consider. It is something that we have to work on, right? Most of us go our entire adult lives and sometimes our childhood too, right? Taking care of other people. We're shouldering that responsibility. We have far more stress than we realize, and we never really take care of ourselves the way we should, right? Or as much as we should. It seems like our body just eventually shuts down. It stops working the way it used to. And then we enter perimenopause and for no reason, it just feels like it stops. And the reason that all of these diet attempts and like why, why your body stops responding and why you're feeling so terrible is because you are just adding stress on top of stress on top of stress. And I talk about this all the time, but you also have to realize that our stress hole or threshold for stress declines a lot because we don't have estrogen and progesterone to help buffer that stress response anymore. So this is where we see before you could handle everything. You were a nine out of 10. You could handle the things. Nothing bad was really happening. You weren't seeing as many symptoms. And now it's only a five out of 10 that triggers symptoms and negative side effects and weight gain and all the things that you're starting to experience. So even though you haven't changed anything, internally, your body has. That threshold has decreased. So you're experiencing negative side effects at a much lower threshold. So you didn't change anything on the outside, but internally things did change. And here are all the things that add to stress to your life that you don't even realize. Work stress, we're worrying about deadlines and maybe you have a boss that you don't like and coworker gossip or, you know, just an overall stressful work environment, right? We have family stress from our kids, our dogs, our pets, your partner. These can all be super stressful sometimes, right? Getting along with your in-laws or your kids are driving you crazy, right? Then we have over-exercising, which is actually super common. We see so many women doing crazy high intensity boot camps and the hits and the orange theories and all of these things, doing a ton of cardio, working out for too many days in a row without ample recovery. We're not resting between our sets. We're just go, 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 right? And then on the flip side, maybe you have a really sedentary job where, you know, we're just sitting all day and that can cause stress and inflammation too. And then we have life changes, even when they're exciting, it's still stressful, right? And then we're worrying about everything. We have anxiety. That's a sign of like uncontrolled stress, unfortunately. And it will cause more stress over time if you're a chronic worrier or someone who struggles with anxiety. This is very common. Negative self-talk and like negative body image, right? Like this is something that is a big stress on our body because our body cannot tell the difference between physical stress, like an injury, versus psychological stress, which is how you talk to yourself. You get the same stress response going on inside of your body. So the more negative self-talk we have and the less confidence that we have in all these things, we're going to see that stress response go up again. And then we have past trauma, we have surgeries, we have birthing babies and growing babies. That is a huge stress on our body. We have family deaths, we're dealing with grief, there's accidents, maybe there's divorce, even if they were years ago. Your body holds on to that trauma and stress and it takes time for your body to heal, but we don't take that time. And it doesn't just come through like therapy and things like that, right? Like it also comes from what we're physically doing and putting our body through. We're also not sleeping enough, you know, like all of these things are stressors, highly processed foods. There's so many things that are stress on your body. So you can like reflect back and be like, wow, I'm actually under a lot of stress. Like I've talked to women who are paramedics, super stressful job. And then they're also dealing with, you know, sick kids or sick parents and taking their kids to activities. And, you know, there's, there's just so much stuff that piles up and we just think we're, we're handling it. Okay. We're doing okay, but we're really not right. 
And what happens is we see that increase in cortisol and we know that results in so many things if left unchecked. And we're supposed to be only in fight or flight in a short moment in time, right? Like we have a, you know, you know, almost get into a car accident, heart rate goes up and you're very alert and your breathing rate gets faster, but then it's supposed to calm down. But we're constantly in this chronic state of stress all of the time. And that's where things really go wrong. It's First of all, when it comes to cortisol, we have four times the receptors for cortisol in our belly fat than anywhere else in our body. So if we're not addressing stress, that cortisol needs somewhere to go. So it's going to be really hard to lose that belly fat. So then we also have that progesterone can't be produced because if stress is high, cortisol is high, our body steals the precursor for building progesterone and gives it to cortisol production. So then progesterone goes down. We see fluid retention. We can see rapid weight gain. We see higher instances of anxiety, poor sleep, more tossing and turning. Um, so many side effects from low progesterone. We see negatively, it negatively affects our estrogen levels as well, which lead to more hormonal side effects and more weight loss resistant. It negatively impacts our testosterone. So it's harder to build and maintain muscle mass. So of course, you're not going to look fit and toned if your body can't build muscle. Then we're also going to see that when cortisol is high, our blood sugar control gets out of whack. That already happens when estrogen goes down. So we have more cravings, more energy crashes, even with fasting, because your body will actually break down muscle mass, take it to your liver for to turn into energy, which is sugar, dumps it into your bloodstream. So even though you're not eating carbs and you're fasting, you're still going to see a rise in your blood sugar. So we need to make sure that we're actually doing things to lower our cortisol levels so that isn't happening because the less muscle that you have, the more insulin resistant you are, which is not good. We're also going to see a decrease in our thyroid function, which means our body sucks at burning calories. When a body isn't good at burning calories, easier to gain weight, harder to lose weight. Um, Our body gets rid of more muscle mass. We see so many issues with like liver health and detoxification, and yet we're all drinking a ton of alcohol right? We are dealing with gut health issues where we're seeing more inflammation, more instances of leaky gut and food sensitivities and constipation and bloating, right? We see overall more inflammation. These are all things that happen when our cortisol levels are high, but also when our estrogen and progesterone levels start to go down. So you have this double whammy of like no stress buffer. Hormones are already lowering. Cortisol is high, making everything you're experiencing from low hormone balance even worse which is not going to be conducive for you being able to lose weight, okay? And now I know you probably are all like, oh crap, this is it. Like I'm screwed, there's nothing I can do. No, no, do not panic. There, we can fix this. But we need to talk a little bit first about like why these diets stop working. Like what what happened to your body? And like most of you have probably dieted more than once, right? Let's face that. And you've been low calorie for more than three months at a time right? You're actively dieting for more than three months at a time. Who's done that? Literally everyone I've ever talked to. And while you may have seen some initial weight loss at the beginning, you probably get to a point where you got stuck or things started moving in the wrong direction or the diet wasn't sustainable. And as soon as you went back to quote unquote normal, you gained all that weight back, right? When we are low calorie for a long period of time, our metabolism slows down. It down regulates because our body is always trying to match calories in, calories out. Okay. Internally, it doesn't matter how much you're exercising, all those things internally, your body makes adjustments to match the calorie intake coming in that it's anticipating. Okay. This is how our body works to keep us alive. This is what it's supposed to do. It responds to the stimulus that it is receiving. Okay. Our bodies cannot function optimally if they are chronically deprived. Okay, we need calories, we need essential nutrients. And if we're not eating enough to blunt that high stress response, we're kind of kicking ourselves in the butts. High stress isn't just trauma, like I mentioned, it can be a million things of everyday life. So at some point, your body is going to begin to rebel, it's going to fight back a little bit, it's not going to work as efficiently. Um, You cannot diet forever, you cannot be in this low calorie state forever, because your body will just stop responding. And this is where the simple seasons of fat loss and menopause really comes into play. And all good um, nutrition programs and coaching programs should follow some sort of season aspect like this. this is how it works. Scientifically, this is how you get your body responding again and how to lose weight. So before you tell me, oh, Steph, but I wasn't eating that low calorie. 
Medically, anything under 1600 calories is considered low calorie and is supposed to be um, not sustained for long periods of time. And it should be monitored, right? And the reason for this is because eating low calorie is a stress on your body and will elevate cortisol. And we're going to see that if you have stress and if you have trauma and other things going on, you're probably going to need way more energy than you think, aka calories, to be able to support yourself. Otherwise, you're going to be in a worse position than you are. Like I've seen this with clients where we're pushing in a fat loss phase and I get them to taper back their training for a week or two and then the scale trends down because there's less fluid retention from less stress. We are giving their body a break or we do refeeds for a little bit, right? So that's a sign that your body needs more. It's stressed. It needs a break. But none of us give ourselves a break on a regular basis, literally ever, let alone when it comes to nutrition, right? So our bodies don't recognize the difference between a low calorie diet and famine or food shortage, right? This is why you're seeing a decrease in energy, less fidgeting, less motiv- motivation, digestion slows down, right? We see more hormonal imbalances, uh, symptoms. We start seeing stalled weight loss. This is metabolic adaptation. This is your body adapting to the environment and the stress that you're putting it under. And so many of us put it under way more stress and don't even realize how stressed our body actually is. If you are having all those symptoms, your body is not okay. So you're essentially running on an empty gas tank. Of course, you're not going to get anywhere, right? So think of your metabolism as a fire. Your body needs to burn, have enough fuel for that fire to keep going, right? That's your metabolism, how many calories your body burns. If we are never putting kindling back in, if we're not putting adequate fuel back into that fire, the fire is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. And so what happens is your body gets worse at burning calories. So you need to have enough input for your body's metabolism to keep running properly, to keep your metabolism nice and high so you can continue to see changes. This is where cycling things is so important. What we need to do first, if you are struggling with not seeing changes, is get that metabolism back up. We need to slowly increase your energy intake, believe it or not, to reset and reactivate your body's energy output. Remember, our body will not lose fat when our organs and other functioning parts do not have enough energy to operate efficiently. Or if you are in such a high stress response and the gas tank is empty, we need to set you up for success and get your body better at burning calories. So a summary of what happens when you're eating low calorie for too long, huge stress on your body. When estrogen and progesterone go down during perimenopause and menopause, stress buffer goes down. So although you haven't changed anything with how much stress you're experiencing, your body's ability to cope with that stress goes down. Then we're adding HIT and car- CrossFit and cardio and all these other things for exercise, which is an extra stress on the body, right? And then if we don't recover properly, we don't take rest days, we don't take rest between our reps, if we're not eating enough food like carbs and protein, our stress hormones just going to keep going up and up and up. And then we're fasting, right? That doesn't make things better for you. So eating less and doing tons of cardio and avoiding carbohydrates, not getting enough sleep, rushing around, always being go, 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 will just cause those cortisol levels to go up. And when it's high, we have more inflammation. We can end up with adrenal issues, hypothyroidism. Um, We see a drop in our sex hormones and goodbye to your libido as well we see that you're just basically stuck in that fight or flight mode. We're just waiting for disaster. We're sitting, we're standing on eggshells. We like don't know what to anticipate. Our body is stressed. So it's trying to preserve as much energy as it can for storage because it thinks that there is a danger. Okay. And if we stay there for too long while eating low calories, your body will not release fat. It will not happen. Okay. So we see digestion goes to crap because that happens when cortisol levels are high. We see more inflammation, more bloating. That doesn't make you feel good either, right? Progesterone goes down, estrogens negatively impact, testosterone goes down, blood sugar gets worse. It's not a good place to be. So what can you do? Realistically, what can you do? Well, first, reverse dieting, very important. This is where we slowly 
Key is slowly, because I'll talk to people who are at 1300 and then they'll just jump to 1800. No, 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 we wanna do this slowly, okay? Slowly and strategically increasing your calories, your protein, your carbs to gain strength and muscle. So that way when you lose fat, you got something to show for it that you're actually looking fit and toned to boost your metabolism, get your body good at burning calories again, decrease hormonal symptoms, improve how your body is functioning, as well as get your health and your energy and your mood and your sleep into a place where you actually feel like you again. So how do you know that you should be eating more food? Well, do you have three or more of the following? You've been eating low calorie or actively chasing fat loss for more than three months. You're struggling to stick to your current diet plan. You have poor energy and fatigue. Your sleep sucks. You're either tossing and turning or waking up or struggling to fall asleep or you wake up and you don't feel well rested. Your gym performance has gone down so you're not getting stronger. You have hair loss or hair thinning. You have symptoms of hormonal imbalances. You have poor digestion and gut health issues like food sensitivities, bloating, constipation. We're not having regular bowel movements every day. You find you're cold a lot of the time. You find social events around food quite stressful. You're a chronic dieter or yo-yo dieter, so you've dieted and tried a lot of different diets in the past. You feel like you're doing everything right, yet nothing is working. That is a big one. You're irritable or experiencing mood swings, depression, anxiety. You're either always hungry or never hungry. Those are both signs of very high stress. Um, and you have a low libido, low sex drive. So most of you are like, okay, yeah, you listed off quite a few things about me. I probably need to, to eat more. Okay, awesome. We figured that out. How do you do this? Well, the most effective way to do this is going to be through tracking, which a lot of people hate, but it allows you to slowly increase your calorie intake so that we have a less risk of seeing weight gain. Because if you go from 1300 to 1800 and your metabolism's at 1300, that's a pretty big jump, right? That's 500 calories in excess. If you continue doing that for a period of time, you're gonna see weight gain. We wanna increase this slowly so that, let's say we're eating at 1400 calories, metabolism moves up. That's your new maintenance, so we're doing good. Then we move it up again slowly and your metabolism moves up with it. So it takes time for your metabolism and your body to adjust to what you are giving it, right? Just like it took time from years of dieting for now your body to get to a point where it's trying to preserve everything, it's going to take time for your body to adjust to being able to burn things off and feel safe again. Okay, so try and download a calorie tracking app if you haven't done so already and just track how you normally eat for four or five days to see where you are. Are you having lots of fluctuations? Are you staying in a narrow range? Are you eating more or less than, I, than you thought? Because it gives you a good idea as to where you're starting. So if you don't know where you're starting, I cannot help you. Okay, you need to figure this out and it's a good way to practice tracking. Don't worry about like what you're eating so much, just eat how you normally eat, get a solid baseline and like just practice the act of tracking because it takes time to learn that is a skill to develop. Once you've got that aspect under control, now we can start looking at intake. So first we like to stay usually between a 200 calorie range um, so that we're not seeing huge jumps because sometimes people will be at 1300 and then 1700 and then 1400. And that's a lot of up and down, up and down, which is a stress on your body. So we want to stay within like a 200 calorie range. And then we're going to increase slowly by 50 to 100 calories each week or every other week, whatever you feel more comfortable with, slowly inching those calories up. Okay. Remember, the whole purpose of bringing those calories up is not weight loss. Does it happen for some people? Yes, because we're decreasing inflammation and all these other factors and like focusing on better foods and all that kind of stuff, right? But the whole purpose of the reverse diet of increasing these calories is to get your body good at burning calories again, improving your sleep, your energy, digestion, stress threshold, being able to put on muscle mass again, hormonal balance. That is the whole purpose, okay? Because once we get that done and that's good, then we can go into fat loss and actually see your body respond, okay? So the whole purpose of the reverse is not weight loss. Everyone's always worried, am I going to lose weight during this process? 
Some people do, some people don't. Some people see a gain of like maybe seven pounds depending on how high we have to go. Like if you're at 800 calories and we gotta bring you up to 2000, yeah, you're probably gonna see a little bit of weight gain because your body needs it for health, right? So, and that doesn't mean that it's all coming from fat. If you're having more carbohydrate, one gram of carbs is three to four grams of water. So if you go from eating, I don't know, let's say 50 grams of carbs to now 250 grams of carbs, that's 200 grams of carbs more. 200 grams times four grams of water, that's 800 grams of water. That's gonna have some weight to it. It's not fat, right? So more food in your digestive system, that's gonna, that's gonna be more, right? If you are eating an apple and an orange and an extra two potatoes a day, holding that and going on a scale, yeah, it's, it's gonna weigh more. You have more food in your body. So understanding that that doesn't mean that you're gaining fat. We are focused on healing so that you can lose weight in a fat loss phase, okay? And going slower decreases your chance of seeing weight gain, but then it's gonna take you longer before you can get into fat loss. So there's no right or wrong way to do it, just trade-offs. So get up quicker, risk seeing some weight gain, but likely to go into a fat loss phase sooner. If you go slower, you're gonna have to be in that phase for a lot longer, but don't see the as much of a risk of gaining weight. And reverse dieting can take six, seven weeks for some people. We have women that have had to do it for 10 months because we've really had to work on hormones and really had to work on gut health and blood sugar control because they did keto for too long. Now their body isn't good at handling carbs and it takes time to slowly increase carbohydrates by like 20 grams every couple weeks to get your body responding properly and improve your blood sugar control. So depending on who you are, where you're at, you're, where your body is right now, you're an accumulation of everything you've been through up until this point. For some people, it's going to take some time. Okay. And that can suck to hear, but it is what it is. Okay. So that's the purpose of the reverse. It's a great opportunity to be able to like change your mindset around food, enjoy foods, find some discovery, how to pair foods, what feels best. Like it's, it's a really important part to learn throughout this journey in that reverse dieting phase about food, okay? So now we have the simple seasons approach to fat loss. We talked about the reverse dieting process a bit, but how does it look through the whole thing? Like how do you get to your goal, right? How do we get there? So there's different phases and each phase has a very important purpose and they can't be skipped. So think of like a football player. Do you think they do the same workouts all year round? Probably not, right? Because that would destroy their bodies, let's be honest. They would not be successful. They would not reach their peak performance goals. Nutrition's exactly the same. So like, for example, when it comes to fat loss, the preseason phase serves to prime your body to enter a fat loss phase at its absolute healthiest so it will respond. This is where we start to clean up our our diets a little bit. Maybe we start tracking our food. We're focusing on incorporating more whole foods, fewer processed foods. This is a long reverse diet. Okay, that whole process I just explained. Okay, so for football players, this is, you know, they're lifting heavy in the gym. They're getting ready for, for the in season, right? So they're focusing on getting stronger. They're focusing on getting faster. They're probably eating a decent amount of food here, right? Like they are, they are training to like, get to the point where they are good for the season. Then we have our in-season phase and that is like the regular football season, right? Their workouts aren't as intense because they have regular like um, games they have to perform well in, right? So they don't wanna be so tired from their workouts, but they still need to be able to perform. So they ease back on their training because now they're, you know, in that peak performance time. This is like the fat loss phase, the in-season. So the fat loss phase. We dial in on consistency with our diets and exercise routines. We track everything as closely as we can to ensure accuracy. There isn't a ton of room for like, you know, oh, I'm not going to track this day, this day, this day, because that can totally pull you out of that fat loss phase, right? This typically lasts around eight to 12 weeks. For some women, it's a little bit longer. Sometimes it's a little bit shorter, but there should always be an established timeline. And this is going to be based on, you know, your motivation, things going on in your life, travel routines, that kind of stuff. Um, Can your body handle being in a fat loss phase for that long? Are we doing a big drop and doing a shorter stint? Are we doing less of a big drop and doing a longer stint? These are all gonna be dictated by your hormones, your energy, your sleep, your lifestyle, all of these things. 
But the idea is there is an exit plan. There is an end date and there is a strategy for coming out of it because again, you cannot diet forever. So for football players, like you can't be playing at peak performance all the time. This is why there's in seasons because otherwise that's where we see injuries, right? So we need to make sure that we are combating that. The same with in season for diet. Post season is all about recovering from the dieting phase because that's a stress. So this is slowly bringing your calories up to maintenance. So while maintaining your results, we're doing this slowly. Maybe this is more of a diet break before we dip back down again. Just like crash dieting isn't healthy, just crash going back to maintenance, also not healthy and good for you either. So otherwise we risk issues with digestion. Your body is like a sponge afterwards. So like you're more prone to hold on to weight. So coming out of your fat loss phase slowly is really important. Um, and then we have the off season, which is like our maintenance phase. This is the phase where we have the most metabolic flexibility. This is where we should actually be most of the time. Okay. Once we've done that first healing, good reverse diet, now it's mostly switching between maintenance, a fat loss phase coming out of it slowly, maintenance, fat loss phase coming out of it slowly, or going into another fat loss phase, whatever that cycle kind of looks like for you. But the point is you cannot be in that low calorie state forever because otherwise metabolism comes down, right? We get your metabolism up to being your maintenance of 2000. You drop your calories down to 1800 and your body will lose a little bit of weight, but you're your body has all these internal systems, right? And then your maintenance now becomes 1800 calories. So you drop again and then your maintenance calories go down with it, right? Cause your body's constantly adjusting. So then if you get your maintenance calories down to like 1300, if you just jump back up to eating thousand, of course you're going to gain weight because it takes time for that metabolism to come down just like it takes time for it to come back up. And that's the big mistake that we see. So we need to Make sure that we're dropping our calories only for a specific amount of time so metabolism doesn't slow down and we don't see plateaus and we can see changes and we don't see negative side effects with energy and digestion, and hormone symptoms, and then bring it back up slowly with reduced risk of weight gain. Whereas like if you just drop and come back up and drop and come back up, you're not going to lose weight because you never did anything to bring your metabolism back up, but you're definitely going to gain weight when you go back to quote unquote eating normal. So this is why it's really important to understand how this cycle works. And like you should be eating quote unquote normal the entire time. Just your serving sizes change a little bit. Maybe we're having like slightly bigger salads and a little bit less ice cream or whatever it is, you know, like we need to pay attention to, you know, you're going to get better results if we're focusing more on whole foods, which you should all the time anyways. But like what you actually eat in a fat loss phase doesn't change that that much. It's mostly about serving sizes and, and using more higher volume, low calorie foods than you would in a reverse where it's the opposite, right? And this is part of the learning process. You have to understand these things. And so then we need to slowly come out of that diet again, right? Because otherwise, like I say, you're you're a sponge and you're just going to absorb that all. So in terms of like the reverse diet, because this is always the phase that takes the longest and it cannot be rushed, right? It's going to take time. Because we, we need to stop, we'll stop, sorry, we will stop reverse dieting once we know your hormones are within optimal ranges and you have like no hormonal symptoms or drastically reduced. You're not super focused on food all the time. You're enjoying it. You don't feel out of control around food. We're not having like crashes and cravings. Our energy is good. Our sleep is good our digestion is good, we're handling stress well, we're doing some sort of activity and we're consistent with all our nutrition. For some women, it takes a long time because we've got a lot of stuff going on that like no one's taught you how to do properly or how to deal with it properly, right? So this is this is really important. And then people are like, well, how do I know when I'm ready for a fat loss phase? Because that's what everybody asks, right? Here is your checklist, Digestion, you're having regular bowel movements and have good gut health. So we're not having any bloating. We're not constipated. We're going to the restroom every day. Sleep, you don't struggle to fall asleep. You're not tossing and turning. You're not waking up at nighttime. You feel well rested in the morning, which a lot of people think isn't possible. All of our clients achieve that. It's crazy what carbohydrates and eating enough food will do for you. Hormonal symptoms, those are drastically reduced if present at all. We have, uh, 
wonderful, wonderful story that I like to share about a client who came in with 48 different hormone, hormonal symptoms um, in our hormonal symptom assessment. And when she finished up, she only had eight. And those eight were because she was still on her IUD. So that was amazing. It is possible, believe it or not. Energy. You have great energy throughout the day. You don't have energy crashes in the afternoon and we don't have cravings. Meeting nutrition guidelines. You are meeting the guidelines that you and your coach or your maintenance calories or however you're doing it, you're meeting those for a minimum of four to six weeks. You are also handling stress well. We're doing some sort of self-care daily, whether that's just coloring for five minutes, doing a crossword, whatever that might be. You're drinking enough water in your day. You're having at least three servings of veggies a day. That's a cup and a half. You can do that. Protein, you're meeting your protein goals and you're getting activity of some sort and you're doing all those have to be present within the same four to six weeks. Okay, you have to achieve all those, which a lot of people don't think is possible, but it is. We see it all the time and it's amazing at how good you feel and it makes weight loss so much easier for you in the long run. And then how do you know if you need to come out of a fat loss phase? right? This is where we see energy crashes come back or you're losing your energy by like 40% of what you used to have. Your sleep quality decreases for seven days in a row. This includes both sleep time and quality. Um, If you're sick or injured, we're going to take you out of fat loss as your body can't handle that stress. Food quality decreases. So we're not seeing our veggies in there anymore. We're seeing our protein coming down. Um, We're not getting enough fluids, that kind of stuff. We see too much stress or life stressors. So this can include work stress, grief, family stress, suddenly being too busy because your body cannot handle that. And we want to set you up for success. Also vacations or other periods of time where you want to enjoy more food. We're not going to put you in in a calorie deficit during that time. And doing a calorie deficit right until the day that you leave and then going back to eating whatever you're going to gain weight on that vacation. So it's learning to like do this properly, come out of it slowly a few days, a few weeks before your vacation. So you can eat more freely without the risk of seeing weight gain when you come back. Um, If you've been in that fat loss phase for like more than 12 weeks, we're probably going to take you out, right? Because we need to make sure we don't allow that metabolism to slow back down again. So this is really important. And the thing that I like to explain to people is a lot of people are like, okay, I gained, let's say six pounds in this reverse diet over the course of like seven months or whatever it is that you did it in. And then I lose the weight. Am I going to gain all that weight back when I come out of it? And then I'm just up and down, up and down. The answer is no. That first reverse diet is always going to be the longest. If you're going to see weight gain, it's typically going to happen there because we are healing your body. But that's where all the hard work is. Now that we've done that, and now you go into your fat loss phase, and then we slowly bring you out of it, and then fat loss phase again, and slowly bring you out of it, your metabolism doesn't slow back down the way it did when you were, or to that place where you were when you first started. So what happens is you might see some weight gain, and then you'll lose it, and then you maintain. Maybe this pound, the weight goes up by a pound. You maintain there. We go into our next fat loss. You lose a bunch of weight. Then you come back up. Maybe you you know, come back up to maintenance. Maybe we see a pound come back up because again, you're eating more food, more carbs, right? More fluid. And so that first initial increase on the scale that you experience in that first time that you're reversing, you're not going to see that in between your phases as long as you are doing it slowly, as long as you're doing it appropriately. Because the thing that a lot of people do is that post fat loss, they stop their exercise routine. They're not prioritizing protein. They go back to eating as much calories as they want. Um, they're not walking as much. They're not prioritizing their sleep, all those things. And then we have a huge difference between calories in, calories out. And that's where you see weight gain afterwards. So learning to come out of it appropriately is super important. Otherwise, yes, you will gain the same weight up and down, up and down, up and down, which you don't want. And when we're looking at the seasons of fat loss, this is how I like to do it. In summertime, I love to reverse diet and I love maintenance because you know what I love? I love to have s'mores. I want to have an ice cream in the summertime. I want to have more flexibility to be able to enjoy outings and, you know, having some mocktails that maybe have a little bit more juice in them with friends and family and stuff like that. 
right? And not worry about putting on weight. Like I'm more, I have more flexibility and I'm in maintenance. Um, and typically I'm more active in the summertime too. So it's easier that way. Then in fall, I love to do fat loss because I don't have a lot going on. September always feels like almost like another new year's, you know, a new start. So I like to do fat loss in the fall, but then I'm going to go back into reverse slash maintenance and focusing on putting on muscle over the holiday winter season because I love pecan pie. Thanksgiving is my favorite. I get to celebrate it twice. I do Canadian Thanksgiving in October and I do American Thanksgiving in November because I love turkey. I love Thanksgiving. I love the food. I love the pie. I am not going to deprive myself of that. That is not a season that I want to be losing weight in. And then in spring, I go back into fat loss. So then I get to where I am for summertime and then I maintain. And that doesn't mean that I'm getting to my goal in just one fat loss season. For a lot of women, it's going to take a year, sometimes two, right? Depending on how much you have to lose, um, grief, stress, whatever else is going on in your life, we have to be flexible with that, right? And understanding that in some seasons where we want to push and go into fat loss, we can't because the situation isn't right. And that's okay. We have to learn to be flexible with that and just adjust our plan to work with our bodies and with the level of stress that we have as opposed to trying to force our bodies to do something that it's not going to do. So you need to learn to work with your bodies and understand like we cannot stress about stress enough because it impacts our hormones so much more than your perimenopause and menopause. So that's the way I like to cycle through fat loss. Our clients all have different seasons. We have some accountants who will not do fat loss during tax seasons. It's too stressful. We have some accountants who love doing fat loss during uh, accounting taxes season because For them, they've got lots of routine. They're not going out for meals. It's very easy to meal prep and plan and like have a routine because their their life's a little bit more busy, but they can handle it. So it's learning what actually works best for you. What's realistic, looking at things in advance and then like just adjusting as life comes up. So that is the seasons of fat loss is how we approach fat loss. All good coaching programs will have some sort of season approach to it. Um, cause otherwise your metabolism is going to downregulate your hormones are going to go to crap and you're not going to lose weight. And you're going to be right exactly where you are right now, which is not where we want you to be. So if you have any questions at all whatsoever, I hope this helped connect the dots, but just please reach out to me. I am always more than happy to help. Um, there is a consultation call that you can book and I'm happy to chat and help you figure out where you are in this, how many calories you should be consuming How long you likely have to be there? Is there any exercise that needs to be addressed? Are we getting enough protein and carbs? We will lay all of that for you on that call for free. No strings attached. We just want to help you get moving in the right direction because it shouldn't be this hard for us to struggle to be healthy. So we want to give you everything that we can to set you up for success. You can try and do this on your own. And if you want help, awesome. Just ask us for it. We can talk about coaching, but we will never bring up coaching on a call unless you ask for it first. So if you want help with that, please reach out. We love you so much. Thank you so much for listening. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.